When we talk about fat, people get confused. There's a really fat phobia in this country where we think being overweight and having fat is something that's a negative thing for us, but that's not always true. We know that certain kinds of, of distributions of fat make a difference in what our health is like. For example, if we have fat around the middle, that's the prelude, uh, the prelude to the metabolic syndrome, which is, of course, the prelude to type 2 diabetes. But we have fat distributed generally across our body, uh, actually, life expectancy goes up. So it's interesting that it's the distribution of fat that makes a big difference there. Then we're looking at, at a book that Udo Erasmus wrote. It's called Fats That Heal and Fats That Kill. We look at the kinds of fats that are the ones that kill. You're talking about the trans fats and, and, and too much in the way of saturated fats. Not a good idea. And looking at the omega-3 and 6 fats, knowing that they're very healthy things. Now, there's a third way to look at fats, too, that has to do with what color is the fat. We look at white adipose tissue, and, and that's the, the white fat. That's one type of tissue that we use to be able to produce ATP. It's a storage for, for calories. And so when we have a lot of that fat there, what happens is our body uh, is able to use that in reserves when we need to have energy. But there's also a fat that's called brown fat. And this fat has a lot of mitochondria in it. And those are the energy packets in our body that have a, a powerful effect on being able to make ATP, which is the energy currency that the cells use. A car uses gasoline, and our cells use ATP. Now, the mitochondria have a lot of iron in it. And because there's a lot of iron there, it gives it that brown color that we see. And that's why we call it brown fat. Now, there was a study that was done that described all this in, in the journal called Nature Medicine in April of 2013, where a lot of this information that I am presenting to you is coming from. Now, when we look at fat, that's brown fat, that fat is producing heat. It doesn't produce ATP particularly. And so what we have is about uh, a whole lot more in the way of, of heat that's produced than ATP. And that means that it's a kind of fat that doesn't lead to us staying fat because we can just burn that and there's no, there are not a lot of calories that go into producing ATP which we use to do the body's work. So there's less storage of it. White fat on the other hand, it, it has about a hundred times less ability uh, to burn heat and about a hundred times more ability to produce ATP. Now fat in general is not just a tissue that harbors uh, energy or is able to burn heat. It's loaded with hormones and uh, a lot of metabolic activity. So we're looking at things like leptin, which is produced in fat. That's the hormone that regulates our, our appetite. If we have a, a high level of leptin, which we have after a meal, it goes up to the brain, says uh, there is enough uh, energy in our system. We don't need to eat anymore, and it turns it off. But in situations where that's uh, where you have a lot of leptin over a long period of time because we're eating too much ourselves, we get something called leptin resistance. And that, in that situation, high levels of leptin we get, the brain gets used to, and then it's not able to turn off that, that mechanism. We tend to overeat and get pretty fat. Interleukin-6, which is a powerful uh, inflammatory molecule, is in fat. Something called resistance and PI-1 have a lot to do with, with coagulation. Uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha has a lot to do with inflammation. Fat makes and stores a lot of estrogen, estradiol, estradiol. And, and a hormone called adiponectin, which is a very protective hormone that tends to uh, keep us from getting arteriosclerosis, the heart attack, strokes, type 2 diabetes. So it's very active. So the more bat of, of, of the brown fat, brown adipose tissue, that's a short for bat, uh, the lower the body weight will be in general, and, uh, the, the, and, and the, the happier we'll be because that's one of the things we, we'd like to see more of, particularly in this epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes. Now, the authors of this particular article really published it because what they're looking for is a way to go to Big Pharma and say, let's find a mechanism that can convert white fat into brown fat. Wouldn't that be neat? because that would be a way that we could go ahead and get rid of that brown fat because it would be burned as heat and not stored so much as calories which are used uh, to keep our bodies working. However, the studies that have been done so far show that actually any, any uh, approach that we've taken to convert white fat into brown fat 
has been lethal. So it doesn't look like that's going to promise to do much. So when we're looking at this whole topic of, of fat, there are lots of perspectives to it. It's not just that being overweight is a bad idea. As I said at the start of this, if we actually weigh a little bit more and it's not distributed around the middle, longevity goes up, not down. It's when it's around the middle that causes all these problems. And then there's the essential fatty acids, and there's also the fat that has to do with is it brown or is it white. So it's complicated, but and it really tells us that we're just beginning to learn some of the things that are important in fat metabolism, which turns out to be something that maybe is, is going to be doing us a lot of good. In fact, eating diets that are higher in fat and protein uh, is turning out to be a diet that is an anti-obesity diet. That's why Atkins uh, and, and diets like it were so popular and should be popular because these are the antidotes uh, to developing type 2 diabetes.